In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a MicroPython web server on an ESP32. My videos are fast paced, but all the code, notes, updates, and more are available on the website, and as always, a link will be placed in the description. This is the third in a series of ESP32 videos. The previous two demonstrate the basics of installing and using MicroPython with an ESP32, and also how to connect and control NeoPixel LEDs and DHT22 sensors. I recommend you watch them first. Building on the two previous videos, we'll start with a web page that shows the temperature and humidity from a DHT22 sensor connected to an ESP32. The page will automatically update with new sensor readings. Next, we'll create a web page with a JavaScript dial to remotely control the color and brightness of a NeoPixel RGB LED attached to an ESP32. All the tools from the two previous videos have been installed on a Raspberry Pi 3 running the latest updated version of Raspbian Stretch. I've also loaded the latest MicroPython firmware onto an ESP32 specifically a Wemos Lowland 32. In a terminal, I'll start by running our shell to connect to an ESP32 on TTY USB 0. I'll pen TAC A to enable ASCII encode binary file transfers, which currently I find to be more reliable. I'll also add TAC E Nano. This enables editing files directly on the ESP32 with the Nano text editor. Unlike the ESP8266, the ESP32 version of MicroPython currently doesn't remember your Wi-Fi settings. The web server will require network access, so I'll create a Python script on the ESP32 to automatically connect to my Wi-Fi network on boot. Edit slash pyboard slash main.py creates a new file that will be saved in the ESP32's root folder. Main.py is a reserved file name that automatically runs on boot up after the boot.py file. Import network loads the network library. Station instantiates a network WLAN and enables the station interface. Station active true activates the network interface. Station connect connects to my Wi-Fi access point. The method takes two parameters. The first is the SSID of my access point, which is Rotron, and the second is the Wi-Fi password. That's all it takes to enable Wi-Fi. Control O saves the file, and then Control X exits Nano. Upon exiting, our shell automatically updates the ESP32 with the edited file. ls slash pyboard shows the newly created main.py file. I'll type REPL to enter the MicroPython REPL. Now when I press the reset button, the ESP32 reboots. The main.py file is executed, and the ESP32 establishes a Wi-Fi connection. OK, the ESP32 is connected, and is assigned the IP address 10.0.7.39. For the web server, I'll be using an open source MicroPython library called MicroWeb Serve, created by a fantastic programmer named Jean Christophe. He's done a great job making a very powerful, lightweight web server that's easy to get up and running on the ESP32 and also PyCom modules. It supports route handling and posts. You can exchange JSON format on HTTP methods to implement a full REST API. It works with AJAX. It even supports WebSockets for real-time data exchange. I'll probably make a future video just on WebSockets. The library also provides a Python templating language, which lets you create dynamic web pages in addition to regular static HTML pages. It can serve most of the popular web MIME types, such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, PDF, CSV, zip, XML, and more. You just place your files in the web path, and then they can be requested by a web browser. I'll scroll up and copy the repo address to the clipboard. Minimize the browser, then open a new terminal window. In the home folder, type git clone, and then paste in the microweb serve address from the clipboard. OK, the library's been downloaded. ls shows the microweb serve folder. cd into the downloaded folder. ls a shows all the files that came with the library. These need to be copied to the ESP32, but first I'm going to delete some unnecessary files to save space and expedite the transfer. rm.git tacrf deletes the git folder. We don't need the license file, or the readme file, or the config.yaml file. ls a shows what's left. Since we already have a main.py file to handle the Wi-Fi connection, I'll use mv to rename the main.py file to start.py. This is a web server example that demonstrates many of the library's features. Let's take a look at it. idle3 start.py opens the example file for editing. MicroWeb Server, which is the main web server library, is imported. A function called HTTP Handler Test Get handles a GET request. GETs are web requests that return data, as opposed to posts which are used to submit data, such as a form. Content is set to a string of HTML content, which includes a placeholder for the client's IP address. Below the IP address is a simple form with the first name, last name, and a submit button. HTTP client get IP address dynamically populates the client IP address placeholder. HTTP response write response OK 
serves the page. There are no headers, content type is text HTML, car set is UTF-8, and the content equals the content string above. There's another route handler called HTTP Handler Test Post. This handles posted data from the simple form above. When the user clicks the submit button, form data is retrieved using HTTP client read request posted form data. First name and last name are extracted. A content string is used to display the posted names. HTML escape is used to ensure the return strings are safe to display, which is a good security practice. Again, write response OK returns the response to the browser as in the previous get handler. The following four methods demonstrate web sockets, but I'm going to save those for a future video. The two route handler methods that we just looked at above are defined. When a user browses to the route test, if the request is a get, then the HTTP handler test get will be fired. Otherwise, if the test route is hit by a post, then the HTTP handler test post method will be fired. A micro web server is instantiated and passed the route handlers. The library was originally written for the PyCon module, which uses a slightly different root path than the ESP32. Therefore, I'll add the web path argument and set the value to slash www slash. This just tells the library that our web files will be stored in a folder called www on the ESP32. The next three lines of this example handle web sockets. And finally, start is used to start the web server. Threaded false to turn off threading. I'll save the one change to the example. OK, now let's copy the contents of the microweb server library and examples to the ESP32. Looks like I forgot to remove one file rmboot.py deletes a sample file called boot.py. You definitely don't want to copy this to the ESP32 because it would overwrite the existing boot.py file, which usually you shouldn't modify unless you know what you're doing. OK, now everything looks good. I'll close the second terminal and return to our shell. Control X closes the REPL, but we're still in our shell. CD microweb serve switches into the microweb serve folder. Well, it looks like our shell doesn't support TAC uppercase A, which stands for almost all. Apparently lowercase a for all would work, but it doesn't really matter since I already deleted the hidden git folder. ls alone shows the content, which we'll now copy to the ESP32. rsync dot slash pyboard syncs all the files and folders in the current directory to the ESP32. ls slash pyboard shows that all the files, including the www subfolder, have been successfully copied. REPL starts the MicroPython REPL. Import start starts the web server. Or not, apparently I have a bug in the start.py file on line 80, a problem with an argument. OK, Control X exits the REPL back to the main R shell terminal. Edit slash pyboard slash start.py opens up the start.py file residing on the ESP32 for editing. There are 86 lines, so the bug on line 80 should be close to the bottom. I'll scroll all the way down. I see the problem, a dash instead of an equals. It should be webpath equals slash www slash. Control O saves the edit and Control X exits Nano and updates the ESP32 with the file changes. Back to the REPL. Since the web server library crashed upon the last import, I'll press the reset button on the ESP32 to start with a clean slate. Otherwise, there could be conflicts. Import start again. Now it's working correctly. A web server is running on the ESP32. I'll switch back to the Chromium web browser and browse to the ESP32 IP address http colon slash slash 10.0.7.39, followed by the path test. This hits the test route, which fires the corresponding get handler. The IP address of the Raspberry Pi is displayed, along with the simple form. I'll enter a first name, last name, and click Submit. This hits the test route again, but this time it fires the post handler, which simply returns the names from the form. All right, we got a working web server. In addition to the routes, the microweb server library can also serve regular HTML files and most common MIME types. Switching back to the microweb server GitHub site and listing the www folder shows several example files. index.html is a basic web page. Styles are loaded from an external CSS file. There are common HTML tags and some sample text. A ping image is displayed and there's a hyperlink to download a PDF file. The next example file is test.pyhtml. This demonstrates the Python templating language. Double braces designate code blocks. Pi is used to define a function, test function. You can use loops, you can use if statements, you can call defined functions. All this code is run on the server when the web page is requested and the results are returned to the browser. In the address bar, I'll type http colon slash slash the ESP32 address slash index.html. The sample HTML file is returned. There is an image, styled text, and a link that when clicked downloads a PDF file. 
Changing the web address to test.pyhtml loads the Python templating example. The white text on black shows some for loops. There are function calls, and only the third LF was true. The included examples provide a wealth of information to help you get started. Now let's build on these examples by adding a temperature humidity sensor and a NeoPixel LED to our web server. The DHT22 temperature humidity sensor is connected to the ESP32. 3.3 volt power is provided by the ESP32, along with the ground. The sensor data line is attached to GPIO 15. A NeoPixel LED is also connected. 5 volt power from the ESP32 is stepped down to 4.3 volts using a diode. The grounds are connected, and the data inline is attached to GPIO 13. Here's what the components look like on a small breadboard. I've already gone over NeoPixels and DHT22s in the prior two videos of this series. If you're interested in more installation details, please check them out, and my website also has the wiring schematics and additional pictures. Back in idle, I have a blank Python file. From microweb serve, import microweb serve. From machine, import pin. From DHT, import DHT22. A sensor is instantiated for the DHT22. A route get handler method is defined called HTTP handler DHT get. A try statement wraps the sensor measure call. T and H are set to the return temperature and humidity. Error checking confirms that all instances are float values. If so, the variable data is set to the formatted temperature and humidity, else an invalid reading error is recorded. An accept throws if the sensor cannot be read. Write response OK returns the response. Headers is set to no cache because we always want to display the latest sensor readings. Content type is set to an event stream because I'll be using server sent events to ensure the sensor readings on the web page are updated. This is a simple alternative to web sockets and is a good fit when the updates only go in one direction from the server to the client. Although server sent events do have limited browser compatibility compared to the more popular web sockets. Car set is UTF-8 and content is set to the data which is formatted for the server sent events. A single route handler is specified for the DHT route. Upon a GET request, it'll fire the method above to return the DHT22 sensor data. Microweb serve web server is instantiated and pass the route handler and the www web path. The start method starts the web server. I'll save the Python file in the documents folder and call it dht underscore web dot pi. I'll close idle, exit out of the REPL, and exit out of our shell. CD to the documents folder where I saved the dht underscore web Python file. Now let's create an HTML file to periodically pull the dht route. Nano dht.html creates a blank HTML file. To save time, I'll paste in all the code. We've got a basic boilerplate HTML file with a few additions. A single div with ID result will be used to display the sensor data. This script will pull the DHT route approximately every three seconds, which I believe is the default for server sent events. Error checking ensures that the event source is supported by the browser. If so, a source variable is set to a new event source and pass the host name, which will be the IP address of the ESP32, followed by the DHT route. Source on message is fired when the event source receives new data from the server. It populates the result div inner HTML with the updated temperature and humidity readings. Again, server sent events may have browser compatibility issues. This simple code is just for demonstration purposes. Control O saves the HTML file and Control X exits nano. I'll reopen our shell. LS shows the dht.html file and the dht underscore web python file. cp dht underscore web dot py slash pyboard copies the Python file to the root folder of the ESP32. cpdht.html slash pyboard slash www copies the HTML file to the www webpath folder on the ESP32. REPL returns to the REPL. Import dht underscore web starts the web server. No errors this time. I'll open Chromium on the Pi and browse to http colon slash slash 10.0.7.39 slash dht.html. The web page shows 27.2 degrees Celsius and 33.4% humidity, and the data updates every few seconds. Since the Lowland 32 has a battery jack, the ESP32 board can now be placed anywhere within range of my Wi-Fi access point where I want to check temperature and humidity via the web. For the last example, I'll create a web page to control the color and brightness of a NeoPixel LED. Control C stops the web server, and I'll press the reset switch to get a clean start, and then press Control X to exit the REPL. Back in idle, I have a new blank Python file. 
The first two inputs are the same as the previous example. Then from NeoPixel, import NeoPixel, and import JSON to manipulate JSON data. A variable NP instantiates a NeoPixel on pin 13. One indicates a single LED. A route handler called HTTP handler LED post will handle JSON posts. Content is set using the HTTP client read request content method. A color stick will store the posted color data. JSON load converts the JSON color content. Blue, green, and red are extracted using list comprehension for the color stick. MP0 sets the NeoPixel to the specified RGB color. I'm not sure if there's a bug in the NeoPixel library or if it's just my NeoPixel LED, but the argument order is currently green, red, blue, instead of red, green, blue, as it appears in the docs. MP write displays the specified color on the LED. HTTP response write response JSON OK sends an OK response back to the browser. A single route handler handles the LED route for posts and fires the above route handler method accordingly. The micro web server is instantiated with the route handler and web path. Then star is used to start the web server. I'll save the file in the documents folder and call it LED underscore web dot pi. I'll close idle and open a new terminal window. To control the color and brightness, I'll use an open source JavaScript hue color wheel for HTML5 called Hue Wheel. It provides a donut shaped control that affords color and brightness settings with both mouse and touch support. Click huewheel.min.js, then click raw and right click to save the JavaScript file to the documents folder. Now let's create an HTML web page to host the color wheel and interact with the Python LED route. CD documents. LS shows the downloaded huewheel.min JavaScript file. Nano LED.html opens a blank HTML file for editing. I'll paste in all the HTML code, which is similar to the DHT example. The huewheel.min.js file is imported. Also, underscore.js is imported from a CDN. It'll be used to throttle the JSON posts. The body has a container div, which holds a div for the hue wheel and an info div. The script defines a throttle set color function, which calls the underscore throttle method and passes the function set color and 400 milliseconds for the wait time. This prevents a page from overloading the web server with too many posts. HW is set to a new hue wheel. When the wheel changes color or brightness, the onChange method is fired and calls the throttle set color function. Most of the other settings are just defaults. The set color function will post a specified color to the web server. The info div displays the current RGB color, red, green, and blue. Color JSON stores the RGB color data, red, green, and blue, in a JSON compatible format. XHTTP is set to a new XML HTTP request. XHTTP open sends the post to the HTTP colon slash slash, followed by the ESP32 IP address, followed by the LED route. Set request header sets the content type to application JSON. XHTTP send posts the color JSON data. This will fire the LED route handler on the web server and change the NeoPixel LED color. Control O to save and Control X to exit. Back in our shell, LS shows the LED underscore web Python code, the Huewheel JavaScript library, and the LED HTML file. CP LED underscore web dot pi slash pi board copies the Python file to the ESP32 root directory. CP Huewheel dot min dot js slash pi board slash www copies the JavaScript file to the ESP32 web path folder. CP LED dot html slash pi board slash www copies the HTML file to the ESP32 web path. REPL opens the REPL. Import LED underscore web starts the web server. I'll load the web page on my mobile phone. As I slide the touch dial, the NeoPixel LED color changes. Pressing the brightness ring changes the LED brightness. I hope you found this video helpful. You can support this channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and sharing. Thanks for watching, and thanks for all the positive comments.